Hey everyone, I'm back with another video in this series. Uh, basically, various MIDI controllers controlling Reaper, making Reaper uh, sort of feel like hardware. At least that's kind of the goal. Um, this is part five in the series. Um, uh, everyone's probably familiar with this controller, the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. Uh, the whole project, uh, just a little history, is uh, was started when I got a Machine Mark III and I just was messing around with the controller editor and I was mapping all of these encoders and buttons to everything in Reaper and I was like, you know what? I should do this for all uh, MIDI controllers I either still own or bought used, anything I can get my hands on. It was basically an addiction throughout uh, 2019 and here we are in 2020. It's August and I'm just trying to make as many videos as I can demonstrating you know, the basic functions uh, of each of these controllers. Uh, so far I did Machine Mark III and the Behringer X-Touch Mini. Again, this is the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, and this is basically my fifth take <laughs> of, of trying to do this, because uh, I'm doing this like just uh, one one thing on the fly, because I have OBS open and everything, and I'm not gonna edit the video, I'm just kinda doing everything. One, uh, one take, and sometimes I babble too much, and sometimes I just completely lose my train of thought. So this is literally take five <laughs> with this mini lab mark too. So I should get some coffee in me. But anyways, uh, without wasting too much uh, of your time, this is basically how it works. Uh, so the first encoder is a click encoder that you, you can also hold shift and turn it. So it has like, you know, a couple different functions and Normally, um, when you use the Mini Lab Mark II, there's the Analog Lab uh, preset, which is basically right here. Uh, th these control, you know, the categories, you know, for all the uh, your presets that you want to mess with. So I have this Reaper map set on, uh, you know, um, user preset two. So basically, what this does, this is a this is a, a jog encoder, and it jogs the Reaper timeline by measure, which is really handy. And then if you click it, uh, as you can see, I already added a few markers. Yeah, um, you just literally can add a bunch of markers anywhere you want and if you hold shift and turn it um, it basically functions as the selected tracks volume and it uses pickup mode or soft takeover so basically it doesn't jump so once it, once it reaches where it was you know it'll, it'll move um, which I like you know because you don't want it, things to jump uh, most people don't like that uh, you know feature or function whatever so uh, this encoder right here is track scroll up and down, um, so you can pick your track. And what's, what else is cool about this is when you click the encoder of the selected track, it shows the plugin chain window, which is really handy, and you can hide it when you click it again. You can do it on this track as well. Let's see. Sometimes these knobs uh, kind of you know, go a little too far, typical. Uh, of my experience with Arturia controllers. I love them, but sometimes these knobs definitely have a mind of their own. <laughs> um, so, and when you hold this, this uh, when you hold shift and turn this, this is a tempo adjustment by one BPM. Um, okay, so the this encoder right here serves as a select item on the selected track. So since there's two items on this track, you know, you just turn the encoder and basically, you know, like to the left becomes that one, to the right it becomes this one, and then the encoder right above that moves the item by the uh, by the grid division. So right now I, I usually have my grid set to 16, 16th notes by default, and you know, I have these little icons. This is basically like grid adjust by half size, grid adjust by double. Um, some of the other controllers, you could adjust the grid size on the fly because they have enough buttons like the Machine Mark III and stuff. So pretty handy. It's just nice to, you know, mouseless workflow is always the goal. So you can just move that and you can select this one. You can move this one anywhere you want. You know, it's really, really cool. Um, so semi, t semi, uh, this is like adjust uh, an item by semitone. So whatever item is selected, um, you turn to the left, you can adjust it, you know, by one semitone, turn it to the right, adjust it by one semitone higher. Um, really handy uh, master play rate a lot of a lot of times people like to mess with this uh, you know just because just to hear stuff weird or just see how things sound faster or whatever faster or slower um, trying to get it back to zero there we go um, zoom vertical zoom horizontal you know pretty self-explanatory this is another track scroll uh, encoder um, since I'm left-handed I like everything on the left side for like the jog and the um, 
uh, scrolling through tracks, but this is for right-handed people, so if you want to do your track scroll here, the only thing that sucks about these encoders are they're not clickable and you can't hold shift, and that's another advantage with these you know, first two. Um, and this is jog as well for any right-handed person. And basically, uh, yeah, so the buttons all serve you know, uh, functions, obviously, like some really important functions. This is obviously record. This is play slash stop. Uh, this is loop on and off, as you can see. And this right here is basically quantize. Um, so if you record like a, a, a quick MIDI clip, you could just instantly quantize. You don't have to pull up the MIDI editor or anything like that. And it quantizes to whatever was last set. You know, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, on average, when you quantize, you want to make sure everything's like 16th notes usually. Um, but sometimes I notice in Reaper when I do this uh, thing and I just do like a quick quantize, it's like set to like eighth notes for some reason. I don't know if it's like a Reaper setting, but um, yeah. So it's just kind of cool. You don't have to like click anything. It's just like you record your MIDI clip and then you just click quantize and it's like done. It's kind of like a like how Ableton Push 2 has, you know, a quantize thing right there and the Launchpad Pro um, that has like an instant quantize. Pretty helpful. Uh, this is record arm for the um, Selected track, obviously, uh, you know, scroll down to track five, arm that, scroll back to track one, disarm, arm it. Um, these two are set time selection start and end. So if you want to do a loop section, you just, uh, let's say we bar nine, st uh, start our time selection, bar uh, 15, end our time selection, and the cursor jumps right back to the beginning of the time selection. So you can work in like loop, you know, just loopable kind of modes, which a lot of people like to work in um, obviously uh, machine Ableton uh, MPC software all that stuff is loop based stuff um, this is an undo button very uh, uh, conveniently located so when you go to pads 9 through 16 um, this undo button becomes cycle FX so what that does is if there's a plugin window open such as uh, this now there's only one plugin so you can't really cycle the effects but if I um, let's see, I think the second one has like a second effect on it. I can't remember. Let's see. Yeah, this has two effects. So this is like the free Valhalla, super massive. So, um, you know, again, this, this is now like a cycle FX button. So when you click that, you're changing the parameters of super massive, change it back. You're on the Tau plugin, close it with the click of this encoder, done. Um, this right here on the second pad bank is marker uh, previous and next or you know um, jump to the end or beginning of your project so like when you have a region like this like a time selection like sometimes you have to click it or hit it twice to, to get to the next marker but usually you know it just goes to the next one but the time selection it kind of stops at it I don't know why it's a reaper thing um, this right here becomes toggle windows. So basically it, it, it functions the same way as, uh, you know, show the plugin window. So if I have that open, I could close it and uh, it, you, yeah, it usually opens it back up. I don't know why, yeah, it's, it's like taking a second. Um, then this becomes a focus. So basically if you have pl uh, two plugin windows open, uh, such as this and this right here so this what this pad does is it focuses between the plugins so you can actually find it without mousing anything right so because a uh, plugin window is always getting in the way of everything so you know it's just nice to tweak the parameters of that plugin and then uh, tweak the parameters of that one and then when you're done with both you know you could either uh, toggle the windows and close them both like that or you could close one at a time um, obviously loop, uh, play and record stay, you know, like the same on both pad banks because they're, you know, uh, some of the most useful functions. And this is a very stupid beat I just threw together, um, just to demonstrate, you know, just like, uh, mouseless workflow. I haven't touched the mouse at all. The jog, you know, the, the whole jog encoder thing makes everything super easy. Um, you know, like say you want to record right at bar seven and you, you know, you just can just by pressing record. Uh, really handy. So the rest of these encoders are just set to uh, MIDI learn, basically channel 14, something far away from a lot of things. Um, you know, just various uh, CC numbers. So you could set them as absolute or relative, depending on, you know, um, your Arturia's MIDI control center. It sounded like a kid was screaming outside in pure delight. Um, hopefully, uh, <laughs> 
That's always distracting when I'm trying to concentrate on the stuff and all of a sudden, ah! Um, so anyway, lots of fun, really cool. Um, that is pretty much the how I mapped the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. Every controller that I have, uh, you know, ba basically like I mapped a bunch of controllers. So the total controllers, I have like a lot of Novation stuff. Um, Arturia's Mini Lab Mark II, the Beat Step, the Beat Step Pro, the Sparkle uh, Drum Machine or Spark LE, um, Key Lab Essential 49, Key Lab Essential 61, uh, Key Lab Mark II. Um, is that all the Arturia stuff? Yeah, I think so. Um, and then as far as native instrument stuff, I mapped uh, Machine Jam, Machine Micro Mark II, Micro Mark III, uh, Mark II, Mark III, Machine Studio. Um, just a lot of fun. And then with the Innovation stuff, I have the SL Mark III, which is like my main MIDI controller. Um, and like I said, I try to keep a consistency among all these, you know, just controllers. Like basically like everything has like a jog. Uh, as long as it has, you know, at least one encoder, um, a track scroll, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions about this stuff. Uh, I'm trying to be as active as I can on YouTube because it's been way too long since I've done, uh, you know, videos regularly. Uh, the pandemic was part of the problem. Uh, 2019 was a rough year in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, I'm back and trying to keep my mind off of the craziness in the world and the country and, you know, basically just trying to give some, give everybody like some, uh, happy, cool things to look forward to with their home studios. Um, everybody's always looking for like less mouse, um, you know, <laughs> less, uh, like just less mouse, you know what I mean? Like, so I always try to make these like as mouseless of a workflow as I possibly can. And I think uh, it does, I think it does the job um, usually, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, with uh, certain problems that always pop up when you're mapping a million, you know, things. So uh, anyway, before I get too nervous and babbly, uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. Like I said, if you found this useful, please subscribe. Uh, please like this video if you found it uh, entertaining or helpful. Uh, please comment with any questions, uh, concerns, re requests, anything like that. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video and there will be many more in this series. Um, I'll probably do MPC Studio uh, version 2 maybe next or uh, maybe Machine Jam, maybe Mark 2 or Studio. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know um, what you think. So thank you so much. I will see you in the next video.